Today, I want to speak about transgenderism, but I want to uh, basically begin with the book of Numbers and talk about the second senses. Uh, because when you look at Numbers 26, verse 64, among them there was not one of those who had been registered by Moses and the, and the Kohen Aaron when they registered the Israelites in the wilderness of Sinai. Not one. So you have to think about that. A clean slate from Numbers 1, verse 2, to Numbers 26, verse 64. God had kept his word. The unbelieving prior generation was wiped out. Not one person, not one. Think about it. 600,000 people we're talking about, and not one. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, then... It says, Numbers 26, 64, God kept his word. Not one person from the preceding generation remained alive except Caleb and Joshua to enter the promised land. It was a total generational turnover. And every single person that did not believe their bodies littered the wilderness. Now, this ought to put a little bit of fear of God in you. Uh, first, God will fulfill his word. He shows us that. He proves that. What word? The word against unbelief. The word against rebellion. He will not leave the guilty unpunished. Exodus 34, 7. So you can't hope that you're going to be able to slide under the door and get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and get in the census that is about entering the New Jerusalem. You won't be able to do that. Uh, <clears throat> God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, he shall reap. And God is also faithful to his people. And that means that J uh, Caleb and Joshua, the two dissenting, uh, the two dissenting uh, uh, members of the 12 spies, they did cross the Jordan. And so did the children of the deceased generation. And this was to counter the idea, oh, you, you're going to send us in there to kill us and our children will suffer. No, you didn't believe, you wouldn't obey, so you don't get to go in, but they will go in. The total of the men of Israel at the second census is nearly identical to the number of men at the first census these are uh this is a military muster these are all military age 20 year old mature men you must compare numbers 146 and numbers 2651 you've got to you actually have to uh get the point of of the book which is one of the scariest books in the entire bible if you understand it. So there's bad news here and there's good news. Bad news for people who put the Lord to the test. Good news for people who obey the Lord. And, uh, you know, it's sort of like when you read the Torah, when you study the Torah, the first five books of the Tanakh, it's like a surgical amphitheater. The top floor uh, of uh, a hospital in Pennsylvania has one of the oldest, I think it is the oldest surgical amphitheater. It has the dreaded circular room, the operating room. 
It was used from 1804 to 1868. Surgeries were performed on sunny days between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. There was no electricity, and the people in the theater were student surgeons, and they were watching their teachers perform actual surgeries in this uh, Pennsylvania hospital. I believe it's in Philadelphia. And, and uh, you know, th this, this is extremely uh, scary in a way because the teacher surgeon is saying to the student surgeons, okay, you see this cancer that I'm extracting here? that I'm cutting out, notice it goes into medical waste. But you see this good organ over here that I'm suturing up? This organ will grow and thrive. And that is exactly what God is saying in the book of the Torah. He's saying, here is the surgical amphitheater, the land. Notice the people who obey me are thriving in the land. Their crops are thriving, their livestock is thriving, their children are thriving, their homes are thriving, their families are thriving. It is good, uh, a good organ, and it's going to grow and thrive because I'm suturing it up. But notice these people over here, these rebels, who don't obey me, who don't uh, tremble at my word, who don't bother to read the Torah, who don't obey the Torah, who don't uh, obey but rebel. These are the rebels. Notice I cut this cancer and I throw it in the medical waste and it is, it goes out of the land. If you want to stay in the land and thrive, obey me. If you don't want to uh, obey me, if you want to rebel, you will be ejected from the land. Death will overtake you, like the the two censuses prove in uh, Numbers. And uh, this this should scare anybody, because when we watch this surgeon, I'm talking about Hashem, Almighty God. When we see him suturing the healthy organ and making it thrive. And when we see him extracting the cancer and throwing it in the medical waste, this is exactly what is going on in the surgical amphitheater uh, of, of the land. We're talking about the land. It's very important that that word Eretz be translated most of the time as the land with a capital L. And I'm talking about uh, the Torah here. And I'm talking about uh, the way God deals with things. You say, you know, I, I don't really go for all that. I, I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, you, you believers, you're into so-called miracles. I'm a, I'm a down-to-earth guy. I, I believe in science, and uh, I can't really buy your your so-called miracles and your so-called miraculous Torah with your miraculous censuses. The one in the second verse of chapter one of Numbers and then the one in 26. I, I can't buy that. Well, my friend, you can't see the forest for the trees. You're not even aware of what's going on right in, under your nose. Here you have Ukraine. Here you have Kiev. And back at, in the late 19th and early 20th century, uh, you have uh, people like... Uh, Shalom Aleichem, that was his pen name, the Yiddish novelist and storyteller. Uh, he he wrote What Became Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, he's living there in Kiev, and you got this anti-Semitism anti and these pogroms. In 1881, in Kiev, a thousand Jewish homes and shops are ransacked. Uh, between 1903 and 1906, across the Russian Empire, including Kiev, estimated 2,000 Jews dead, many more wounded. Why? Because of a violent wave of pogroms. This is the backdrop for Fiddler on the Roof. Then you have the, the Kiev pogrom of uh, October 31st, 1905. 
the looting, raping, and murder, targeting Jews. And I'm not even going to talk about what happened during World War II when the Ukrainians brought forth the Jews out of their villages and turned them over to the SS. I'm not even going to talk about the mass graves and all that. And now, who is the president of Ukraine? A Jew. Zelensky. And in 2019, over 70% of the vote went to this Jewish man. Now, if that's not a miracle, I'd like to know what in the world would be a miracle. And that's right under your nose, and you can't even see a miracle right under your nose. This is this is bad news. So why did God order a census in the book of Numbers? Well, it was a military census, first of all. They were preparing to go to war. And um, uh, we were talking about war preparations. Women aren't included. That's the reason. There's a difference between male and female, by the way, biologically. Uh, God sees that. He created man, male, and female. He did a census of only the 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 males, not the women. Uh, the word uh, for census, misper, uh, means uh, the number. We're talking about a number. He wants to know the number of males. And uh, we're talking about why the Bible does not support transgenderism. Uh, of course, that might not matter to you since you don't believe in miracles, even one right under your nose with Zelensky since you don't study the book of Numbers to see the terrifying two sentences where to the person he fulfilled his word. Don't fool with me. I am the surgeon in this surgical amphitheater. And if you are student surgeons watching this, and you are aware of what I'm doing, you will see that certain things go out of the land, out into the medical waste container, and certain things thrive and grow. And it all has to do with me. You're dealing with me, the head surgeon, the master teacher surgeon. And I'm telling you that our bodies matter. Uh, he knitted us together in our mother's womb, Psalm 139, verse 13. Uh, our, our, our bodies, our physical bodies are part of the redemption. We will get a new body. And there won't be any question uh, uh, then about the veracity of God. We're supposed to glorify God in our body, 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Uh, the whole business of not of women not dressing like men and men not dressing like women. Uh, you you have to understand that our bodies are given to us as a gift, and uh, that we are to uh, uh, take care of our bodies. Drunkards, people that uh, treat their body as uh, just a receptacle for the liquor bottle, uh, they're in trouble with God as far as uh, going to heaven is concerned. Uh, it's not the unforgivable sin, but sipping saints really don't fit the biblical data. Uh, we did not create ourselves, and if we think we can recreate ourselves like some kind of Jean-Paul Sartre uh, person uh, and uh, do our own thing, we may find ourselves at loggerheads with God. We cannot appreciate the, the complexity, the beauty, the mystery of the human body until we understand it is the gift from God. And uh, if uh, gluttony 
uh, if pack smoking a pack of cigarettes or four packs of cigarettes and, and the doctor warns us and we don't pay any attention, uh, we, we don't want these uh, limits or constraints placed upon us because we are rebels. We, we want to do our own thing. Everything's on the table. Marriage, gender, everything. We're millennials. We're uh, Generation Z. We know everything. We don't need the Bible. We don't need to consult the Bible. We have a tree that we're eating from. It's called the knowledge of good and evil. We have moral autonomy. And uh, we don't want to accept that God created each one of us as male or female. Genesis 127, in his image. And when you kill somebody, when you commit murder, uh, when you destroy somebody made in God's image, you're in trouble with God. And the death penalty is in the Bible. And it's uh, because, uh, uh, you know, you can't trifle with God. When you read the Torah, this becomes very clear. Obey me and remain in the land. Disobey me and be jetted out of the land. The people said, oh, these are just individual cases. I'm not going to uh, take much stock in them. Then God says, all right, I'm going to pick up the entire nation and throw them into the exile. Now, if that's not a miracle, I'd like to know what, what is. Can you imagine if every person in the United States was summarily hauled off to New York Harbor and then taken in ships all the way to Moscow and left there to languish for 70 years till they really understood that God is the God of the United States, not to be trifled with. And then miracle of miracles to bring them back to send Ezra, Nehemiah and even a, a high priest named Yahushua or Yeshua, and then the prophet coming up to this J-E-S-U-S -S and saying, you, J-E-S-U-S, -E you are the, the springing up from dry ground king that we can't refer to because we don't want to get uh, Darius or anybody upset uh, because they are the Persian king. So we'll use a, a euphemism, a circumlocution. We'll call you the Zemak, the sprout. And uh, that's a code word for Moshiach Ben Dovid, Ribi Melika Moshiach. You, J E S U S, are the Ribi Melika Moshiach, Moshiach Ben Dovid, savior of the world. Now he says this. 500 years before it came to pass. He's standing in front of a guy named J-E-S-U-S, -S, and he says, your name is the C-H-R-I-S-T. You say, where in the world is that found? It's found in the book you're not reading, mm -hmm. the one that I've been studying word for word since 1971. And this scripture in Zechariah 6, 11, and 12 it's very important for you to understand. If this doesn't grab you, I don't know what would grab you. This is a miracle book. And all these people were jettisoned from the land and then returned to the land. I'm talking about the whole nation. So God is not to be trifled with. If he tells you you're either male or female, you better go along with it. And don't give him that non-binary uh, baloney. It's culturally in, I know. You can win friends and influence people with it. But it is baloney. Uh, God is opposed to the confusion of male and female. And that means cross-dressing is verboten. And that means that you don't trifle with God about these things because God has proven his veracity, but you haven't proven yours. Why should we believe you when all you're doing is spouting the latest cultural baloney? Uh, 
So what we're talking about here is the land, capital L, A N D, and how people thrive in the land or are jettisoned out of the land, depending on whether or not they take God seriously. And God shows that he is a God who can be trusted because he actually brings all this to pass. And we see it uh, very clearly. There are male sheep. There are male animals. There are male humans. There, you know, there, there's a, a, a an actual word to differentiate the male from the female, and this is all the do, the doing of the Lord. This is His uh, creation, and this is uh, what He says. Now, if you try to twist the scriptures. And you say, well, aren't some supposed to be eunuchs for the kingdom of God? Uh, and a eunuch was non-binary, right? Mm -hmm. No, that is not true. We're talking about a male who has either been born with this uh, genitalia situation or men do this to him for whatever reason, uh, but uh, this is a spiritual thing where instead of chasing after children, instead of the marriage bed, instead of the responsibilities uh, that are domestic and marital, one dedicates their life for spiritual pursuits. Now, Rob Shaul had a right to have a wife, but he did not go that way because, frankly, he was in too much trouble with the gospel, being chased from one town to the next all over the world, being thrown in prison, et cetera, et cetera, that he could not really please a wife. He had to please the Lord. And that's what we're talking about here. So don't inject uh, your uh, 21st century cultural baloney into the Bible and try to twist the scriptures to make it say what you want it to say. I'm going to stand up for the scriptures. I'm not going to condemn people. God died for th through Meshach ben David, who is the Zun Funderoi Bishter. God died for the whole world. The Atik Yomin sent the Bar Enosh, and, you know, he is to be served as God by all peoples. He, he was sent for one purpose, that not one person, not one male, not one female, not one self-described transgender, would perish. Uh, everyone is a sinner. We are all rebels. You may have sexual rebellion. I may have some other kind of rebellion. Uh, but we're both rebels. And God sent the, his son into the world, not to condemn the rebels, but, but that the rebels like Rav Shaul, the rabbinic rebel, might be saved. And that's why he loves everybody. That's why we're not condemning anybody. But I'm telling you that the Bible does not teach what you're trying to make it teach. And if you care to be a student of the scriptures, and go into that surgical amphitheater and sit down there with the other surgic, surgeon doctors, I should say student surgeon doctors, and actually observe an operation with the master surgeon teacher, God himself, opening the patient, which is Israel, 
on the surgical slab, which is the land, you will see that the ones who obey and respect the Torah and understand it, that it even speaks of Moshiach ben Dovid, and they don't lie about that, because who is a bigger liar than the man who says that the Torah has nothing to do with the Moshiach and that he's never mentioned or alluded to in the Torah? Who is a bigger liar than that? So if you want to be a liar and you want to rebel against the Torah, keeping a very religious uh, face in the whole rebellion, of course, and being very uh, religious in your uh, external demeanor as you rebel with gritted teeth and a stiff neck against the clear messianic message of the Torah. If you want to do that, you can, but you will be ejected from the land and you will be thrown with the medical waste. On the other hand, if you want to obey the Torah, then the surgeon will suture up that organ and it will begin to thrive. Now, Linda's going out to Ohio to get a kidney transplant. And the surgeon may very well remove the polycystic kidney uh, as he sutures in the new kidney, whether it's a deceased kidney or a living donor kidney, an altruistic donor. Uh, he will suture it in, and within minutes after the surgery, when she's in recovery, the dripping into the bucket will show that the kidney has already activated. It's already removing waste from the body. It's already showing that it is a healthy organ. If you want to be healthy, my friend, and, re and remain in the land, with a capital L, L-A-N-D. You must obey the Lord and love him with all your heart, all your soul, and your entire uh, mind. And that means that you get your truth from the inspired scriptures and not from the latest cultural nonsense. And I want to pray right now that somebody will understand this. Moshiach ben Dovid, we thank you that you came from the Atik Yomin to give us the Ruach HaKodesh. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Just as man and woman are Echad. Male and female can become Echad. But male is not female and female is not male. And the very echadness of God is declared in Genesis 127 and Deuteronomy 6.4. And we ask you, Lord, to save every transgender and every heterosexual and every one who is non practicing and everyone who is so-called virgin we pray Lord that these virgins who are corrupt in their mind and uh, pharisaical and holier than thou in the way they view others will get on their face and cry out to God for mercy because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not even one. And not even one who rebelled against God in the wilderness and said, God can't uh, make a uh, set a table in the wilderness. You know, those giants are too tall. Those walls are too thick. We're not going. We're not going to believe God. We're not going to obey God. We're going to we're going to turn our backs and maybe even get another leader, maybe even return to Egypt. Every one of those rebels died. 
they were not in the census taken after two generations had expired. You see, in every generation, there's a clock ticking. And in the Bible, uh, it's a 20-year clock. There was a clock that ticked. It ticked out 20 years, and then it ticked out another 20 years. And then a second census was taken after the first census of chapter 1, verse 2. There was another one in chapter 26. Not one of those rebels is in that census. Now, that ought to scare you. That God knew every single one of those sinners. He knew those sinners by name. They didn't know him, and they didn't want to know him, but he knew them. And his justice, they did not escape. Each one was ferreted out by the angel of death, you might say. And uh, they didn't escape. The surgeon found every bit of the cancer of that old Israel, not worthy of the name Israel. And the surgeon, before the entire world, making every human being in the world a student surgeon in the surgical amphitheater, making every one of us culpable because what we've seen with our eyes, we now must obey. And if we don't, we are rebels ourselves. This is a fact. We have the Babylonian Talmud to prove that the Jews were in Babylon. And we have Israel. When I was five years old, I became a nation. So we can see very clearly that God can... Remove them from the land and bring them back. Remove them from the land and bring them back. Not once, but more than once. Even in front of our very eyes. And then in 1967, they actually were there in the Wailing Wall area. And they reclaimed the old city. And Jerusalem was no longer trod by the non-Jews. And then a revival began among the Jews. And that was 1967. And I was a very lost man in 1967. More lost than I can even tell you. But within four years, my mother had finished her work, although she lived to be 83. Uh, she lived in 1983 to be 68 years old. She, in those four years, was able to migrate out to California and drag me to the house of God, where I was dispatched over to Donald McGavern. And all these books and things started to happen, including everything you need to grow a Messianic synagogue. Now, why would anybody want to write a book like that? Well, when thousands of Jews all over the world start to turn to the faith, they need a Messianic synagogue. And in the Breed of Shah, Yaakov Ben Dovid says, when a rich man enters your synagogue. So we didn't impose anything foreign on the Breed of Shah. It's right there in the Breed of Shah for everyone to see. But just as people don't really see the Torah, they don't really see the Breed of Shah. And I'm praying that somebody's eyes will be open during this message and they will turn to the Lord. Bashir bin Dovid, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for making the Kippura to be led as a lamb to the slaughter. A Pesach lamb died when the Pesach lambs were dying. We come before you, Lord. We cry out to you for mercy. We call on the name of the Lord. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We thank you that the name of the Lord is actually in the Tanakh 
and that he is the Lord with a capital L. And that's because David calls him Lord. Psalm 110. Malachi calls him Lord. Uh, Malachi 3.1. Isaiah calls him El Gibor, Almighty God. Isaiah chapter 9. And Daniel says that all peoples will serve him as Lord with a capital L. Pe Lamed Het. Lord, I want to ask you that someone would cry out to him and agree with Zachariah, Zachariah, chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, that J-E-S-U-S -S is the C-H-R-I-S-T, not Menachem, not anybody else. There's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. We thank you, Mashiach, for your salvation. We receive it right now. And everybody said, Amen.